Tonight on Country Squire Radio, somebody dropped off some goodies for us. So we're going to be drinking on air as if that's any different. <laughs> like, I know, right? Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Monday. <laughs> no, we got a great show on casing and flavoring when it comes to your pipe tobacco. We also have a wonderful pipe question of the week as well as quick fire questions and more happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Hey, man. How you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Shoot, I'm sitting here uh, drinking uh, my favorite gin with uh, one of my best friends. Oodles! I mean, sm smoking <laughs> smoke, smoking a, a pipe that was a, a gift from a good friend. And uh, man, yeah, I'm just, I, I don't know if I could be happier. Hey, you know, speaking, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> the, the gin that you are enjoying, I'm, I'm sitting here having a, a couple of roses, which is appropriate given the uh, conversation. I think there's like, four, right? Uh, two, two couples. All four roses. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but but the, the the beverages that we are enjoying actually uh, were kind of surprises. Yeah, we, we got to the shop this evening. You know, I, it's funny. Uh, Mondays are kind of my long day. Uh, and so I, you know, I come early in the morning, early by which early, I mean, you know, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, early and, for and John. Then, right. Right. And then I, <laughs> you know, I, I work for several hours and I go home and kind of, kind of relax, prep for the podcast a little bit and, uh, you know, do some chores, feed the dog, that kind of thing. But then I come back and, you know, I, I came back for the podcast tonight and here I am looking at a, at a big brown paper sack and it said, Oh yeah. Uh, from Peter with love. <laughs> oh, and we're and, feeling the love and, and, and we're feeling the love because, <laughs> because the love was, uh, was both of our favorite liquors. So we've got, I, I, is four roses your favorite liquor? I know it's, it's up there. Well, Buffalo trace, yeah. but Buffalo trace is hard to come by. It's hard to get. Yeah, sometimes. I've, I've yeah. said before, but like, you know, when I can't get Buffalo trace, Right. Uh, the four roses single barrel it, i am definitely a fan the single of. barrel four roses is great yeah. uh and and the one the guys next door they uh at, at our, our liquor store which is right next to the squire uh had several batches of four roses they do this every year they uh pick out the barrels themselves and then uh you know go up Ooh. there and uh you know get to get to decide which kind of flavorings they want and all this type of thing and so uh i i believe this is from their uh their batch that actually has a, a pretty high alcohol content i want to say oh, that's my favorite kind yeah i want to say it's like a like 110 112 proof something like that it's oh, pretty snap. pretty potent stuff yeah. yeah but um yeah 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 it's 40 what is that 49.5 49, oh no wait Forty. It says forty nine dash five. I think that's the num number. Yeah. Of the so, so that's a that's a hundred proof. Okay. Uh, that's a hundred proof whiskey right there. So All it's right. gonna be pretty strong. And, and and of course, uh, I have my uh, my beautiful boodles, which uh, which I'm I'm just tickled about. Now, do you put poodles in your boodles? I do not. But but you do, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm more a fan of boodles than I am of poodles. But I would not take yeah. poodles of either. What, you wouldn't take oodles with poodles? I don't think I know. <laughs> no, no, sir, no, sir. I do love poodles. My... Don't shed, but but oodles. Boodles, boodles will make you shed. Well, speaking of shedding <laughs> and, and the poodles and the oodles, did you know that last week uh, there was a day that was bring your dog to work day? No. Okay, so what's the deal about this? Like, Wait, I didn't bring Penny to work at all last week. Well, see, this is the thing. I actually had, on that exact day, I could have brought Isley, my dog, to work, but I didn't know this until I turned on Twitter and saw that it was trending. I'm curious as to whether or not these days are actual days or if someone just gets on there and just makes it a hashtag and then it's just declared that day can't we make it like bring your pipe to work day oh like, like bring like well i mean for me that's literally every single day but we got international pipe but i mean you know, day. yeah i mean you, you got to think like okay throw us a bone you, you've you've outlawed smoking literally everywhere like you know it, at my alma mater hey real quick do i need to turn that off uh, let me go turn yeah it let's, let's do that all right <laughs> sorry <laughs> mike um yeah all right so while uh while john david's doing that um i want to let you know so so you may not have heard it but you probably did um, there is lightning rain, raining down from the skies as, uh, I think that's the smoke eater, right? Smoke eater. Um, it's, uh, you, you know that it's been around when it hollers back at you. No, I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying those little, those little sparks, that means it's doing its job. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, I, I go with that. It anyway. eats your smoke and lights your pipe. That's right. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> totally up to code. No, you, you know, I was saying like that they, they've taken smoking away from from us in all these locations. Even at my alma mater, Mississippi State, uh, it has this huge drill field. At state? Uh, at, at state, you know, they the, the drill field is uh, it, it was a former military uh, university, and so the the drill field is where the you know Corps of Cadets would parade around all this stuff. But it's a huge field. Uh, literally, you can be in a corner of that field around you know zero people, and and they they won't even let you smoke on the field anymore. Oh so, man! Yeah, I mean it's just crazy. So at least give us one day 
you know, where you can bring your pipe to uh, bring your pipe to work. I like that. I, I like I don't know. hashtag bring your pipe to work day. We, we can make that. A th I, I we, we can make that a thing. If anyone could. I, we, all we have to do is figure out that <laughs> one hour where Twitter is the most like nothing's happening. And yeah. then boom, we pounce. <laughs> that's what you gotta do. And that's it. And then, you know, just ask for forgiveness afterwards. Hey, uh, speaking of <laughs> other events that uh, happened uh, last week, um, Mississippi Comic Con. All right. So. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I, you know, I'm telling you, you, man. You went? I, I did go. Yeah. What um, was it? What was it like? So I, I've, I've I've mentioned this last year, but but every single year this thing continues to grow. I am not. You know, you you might not know this about me. You might suspect otherwise, but the reality is, I'm not a big like comic convention person. That's bullcrap. No, I'm really not. <laughs> uh, I, I dig. Look, I love. There's no way that's true. <laughs> I love superheroes. I'm really? always impressed by the by the cosplay. If I had the body yeah. for it, I would totally you know uh, be a costume. Otherwise, I look like if Spider Man let himself go in some of that spandex. You know? No, you, <laughs> you you don't want to do that. But you, uh, you have the body for it. You just got to pick the right character. Well, there it is. You know. <laughs> not not many. A really my stature. Yeah, and, a, really, uh, a really small, hairy one. Yeah, <laughs> well, Wolverine could pass. But here's the thing. So every single year, this thing has continued to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm telling you, man. Actually, you know, you might be able to clean up with some some uh, church wardens with this crowd you think in so? particular. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe put a squire booth out there and have I some have would, some church wardens. I think you'd clean up. But uh, but no, I, I've gone to this every single year, uh, not necessarily as a as a you know person going per se, but uh, as a speaker. Um, you know, they, they've had really a panel every single year. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. And so last year it was kind of a DC TV talk, because of course you know one of my other shows is the Flash TV Talk podcast. This year we did a panel on uh, explaining time travel. In in okay. television, okay, and so uh, it was, really, and you, you sat on this panel. I, I did. I um, <laughs> what what exactly qualifies you for this? So the Flash uh, television <laughs> series deals a lot with time travel, and so that was kind of the you know the the the, the thing that qualified. Was me. Like, did you brush up on your quantum physics like before you went in? Yeah, no. So here's what happened. <laughs> the funny thing is, last every single time I've done it, like you know, a couple people, you know, you come in, you have like 15 people that show up for the panel, and by the time you're right. done, you got like the one guy who's just feels too bad because he's the last guy in the room if he. Leaves and you to talk to, <laughs> yeah. but but this year we actually we had a pretty solid group, man. We we uh we had a, a big big room that was almost full, and most of the people actually stuck through it. And uh, it was mostly me drawing up on the board with a bunch of like you know trying to draw the Terminator and you know Back to the Future and everything <laughs> else. And it was it was a lot of fun. That's great. But I'm telling you, That's man, great. the the Comic Con crowd. I mean, y'all, you know, it's got to be a good turnout. I'm sure the listeners there there are listeners right now who do do the convention thing. Yeah, and I, I'd be curious to to hear their validation. I think that pipes, specifically church wardens in particular. Yeah, we clean up like would you go, clean would up. go well. Well, and you know, we've gotten every year we in historically we've done a booth at our uh, local Celtic Fest, which is kind of like a like a if a Renaissance fair yeah. met like like a redneck Mississippi like pasture beer fest you know what i mean like right. it's kind of it's kind of that type thing you know <laughs> and and we always you know take a bunch of church wardens out there and a few uh you know a few of our more premium pipes and then um and, and sell them but what's interesting is we've gotten a lot of feedback from that we've we've gotten a lot of regular customers that have become uh you know committed pipe smokers uh, because of that and have you know found the shop found other shops and uh, and have really gotten into the into the industry. So it's, it's kind of fun to find, you know, little niches like that, that, you know, pipe folks can kind of connect with. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. Hey, pipe folks have really been connecting with last week's episode. Yeah, man, isn't that funny? Dude, I got on here and I, I just felt like almost shameful when we got done with the episode <laughs> because I was just, I was just rolling. I mean, I, 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 I it, it kind of was like confession time for the tobacconist, <laughs> you know? Right, right. We, we, we should have busted out the Parsons. I, we should have, we should have. By, by the way, Father Keith, uh, the, the Parson himself was in, in today, oh, him, really? him and my friend James, who uh, Father Keith is the priest at my little Anglican church, and uh, my friend uh, James, who lives in Cato, Mississippi, a little Baptist preacher, and uh, man, we 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 they were just having a, a rich conversation today. It was a, it was today was full of Parsons at the, at the Squire, man. but um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, it, la last week I, I felt like it was like confession time. It was like uh, you know uh, me just having a a, a little moment where y'all could. Uh, suffer through some of my stories and, and just and just let me get it off my chest just to some of my favorite people. Well, <laughs> based on the feedback, I think that suffering through is about the furthest thing that anybody felt, unless they were referenced during the stories. For the most part, uh, you know, everything that we I got. I don't think anyone I complained about that bad would be listening to Country You Spire never Radio. know. You never know who's listening. But no, man, the the, uh, the feedback was so great. And uh, so I think that we we will, you know, uh, this, this, this may have to kick off a new series, be it uh, Tales from the Tobacco or stories from the squire. I don't know that we've necessarily worked out a name yet, but 
uh, uh, several episodes down the road, this will be coming back and uh, be a reoccurring. Uh, That's hilarious, man. I, well, there will be no shortage of material because something new and interesting <laughs> walks through the door literally every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so new and interesting things going on, of course, at the Squire. You've got um, the, the, the new tobacco. Uh, I, so this was actually being discussed as I was walking through. I don't want to necessarily debut yeah. something. Oh, okay. So yeah, let me, let me get into this a little bit. Um, uh, for those of you that of course have kept up with the, with the shop over the past, uh, several months, you know, that we've come out with a few new blends earlier this year, we had uh tobacco du chocolat, our new Ooh. chocolate blend. Uh, that name was actually a former name of one of our, uh, Squire blends about 10 years ago. And we've resurrected that blend, brought it back. Uh, it, but under a new uh, a new recipe, and so we have have that blend. We also have County Seat, uh, which debuted earlier this year. It's a new apple tobacco, um, and then uh, here it's very good, yeah, very good good tobacco. I like it a lot. Worked really really hard on that one, um, particularly uh, earlier. Uh, just a couple of uh, weeks ago, we came out with White Rose, uh, which of course is, is still sitting on our counter here. It's our oh. it's our um, it's our Yorkist blend here at the Country Squire. Yeah, more on that in a second. And uh, <laughs> and the uh, and and our and our uh, favorite Yorkist blend, uh, of course, uh, is a honey flavor, and and every purchase of that actually supports uh, the show, which Ooh. we're which we're doing right now, and we we greatly appreciate. It. We've sold a bunch of that, by the way, and I can't wait at the end of the month to you know run the numbers and see how many ounces of that we sold. But uh, it's been really exciting. So um, so anyway, the. The intern, right? He, he, Caleb. You know, he he's the guy that works the afternoons here at the Squire. He does a lot of the shipping stuff now. And so, you know, if you get a, a handwritten note, uh, a lot of times it's going to be from Caleb. And Caleb, uh, you know, he's just a good friend. And I hired him at the shop because I trust him and love him. And uh, he's done an outstanding oh, he's job. He's just a great guy. Um, and especially for his age, super super mature. He's hardworking. Like he's just he's just a great guy. But um, but Caleb. I, I'm kind of terrified that I hired Caleb because I'm going to be, I'm going to be real honest. I think he's a better blender than I am. Oh, snap. I like, I, I'm kind of being vulnerable again, like two weeks in a row. Caleb though? Like, I think Caleb might be a better blender than I am. Bo, this is the thing. He, he does turn him out pretty quick. No, Caleb, he's always experimenting, which is, which is great, but he comes from the coffee world. Yeah, right? that's and, right. And yeah. so he's already real attuned to these, you know, ridiculously like, you know, finely defined flavors and nuances and concepts, you know, regarding his palate. And so um, he, he brings that into the pipe world. And I think just, I, I don't know, man, I think he's got a real future in this. Like oh, I, I, I really do, but he's been just experimenting so many, you know, with so many different blends and we're actually going to come out um, within the next month of, of two of his blends uh, here at the Squire. So uh, stay tuned on that. I'm All really, right. really excited about that. Those are uh, going to be Caleb Crawford originals. Uh, which will be sold here at the Country Squire. I'm actually smoking one right now. Um, this is a blend. I cannot wait to tell you more about it. Um, All right. Well, that's that's, that's good. That's good. That, we'll, we'll yeah, that. yeah. I, it, it's it's great. The, one of them is uh, one of them is a non aromatic, and one of them is kind of a hybrid blend. We'll go with that. Uh, but I, I'm I'm very excited <laughs> about this. So uh, so anyway, just just stay tuned on those. See, I got to be careful because I overhear things that I'm not sure whether or not that's. Public I know, knowledge. right? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I, glad I. I, I but, but that's but that's a good teaser. <laughs> that, that's that's, good. that's a really good. I will say about this non aromatic blend. It's uh, I, I think our uh, I, I think our our lovers of uh of the the toasted uh you know dark latakia leaf will be uh will be happy with it so um yeah very, very excited about that and that's funny coming from me because i don't smoke a lot of latakia right it's, yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm one of those people i'm more of a virginia guy i just like those grassy uh hay-like flavors and uh i think caleb's done something really nice here so oh, i'm excited good. to see it yeah that's really good well and, and more on uh on uh, white rose in particular some in, yeah. uh, a story to kind of share about that uh, tragedy that occurred in the in the pipe world what happened well I, it's going to pertain I, I have a feeling that our conversation today will, will kind of lead into it uh, uh you know talking about flavors and that sort of thing and 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 but what, did he pick lancaster over you well, well hang on now hang on <laughs> well, 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 well you know it was far worse than that far worse than that <laughs> But uh, but before we dive into you know, the uh, the the meat and potatoes of this episode, man, we got some amazing new club <laughs> members joining the Country Squire Radio International Pipe Club. That's great. We got to give major shout out. This is awesome. Wow. Yeah. You, wow. You several. Doggone. Coming out. This is great. All right. So so first of all, this is actually a, a member who is already a member at the Pilgrim level has yeah. actually upgraded now to the Squire level. And and it's a she. Sheila. Dude. Sheila Yaunt. That's great. 
me, it was a was a pilgrim is now uh now at the squire level. Full so fledged. That's great. Sheila, thank you so much. That's wonderful. Now, you know, last week I mentioned that, you know, the, the names are coming in and everything. And I, I mentioned that, you know, sometimes I, I feel like people are just making up names to to mess with me. Yeah. At the, at the, <laughs> All right. So so here at, we go. At, at this point, they're just, you know, they're just they're just trying really hard to just, you know, make it hard on you. All right. This all right. Now this look. <laughs> We want to give. Bad. I feel bad for Sheila because I think we got her name right. I'm I'm assuming I mispronounced it the first time around. Yeah, but I mean th this one is. Uh, yeah, I, I I know how you say this name, but Bo, how do you how do you you, you say this name? Welcome to the squire at the squire level. Welcome to the <laughs> International Pipe Club, Andrew Kaufuopuluos. That is ridiculous. That is that I had his verbatim, sir. <laughs> Kaufuopuluos. Popolos. Po say, say it again. Popolos. Kafopolos. Kafopolos? You're really close. Is that right? Yeah, it's Kafopolos. Kafopolos. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on. <laughs> Andy, thanks so much, man. Andy Andy Kafopolos uh, here from uh, from Jackson, Mississippi. Absolutely. And then uh, a new member as well at the Squire level. I swear, Andy, he was like, it, it, the guy's just messing with me at this point. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> and then also joined at the Squire level. Uh, big ups to Bobby Wayalters. That would be Walter. It is Walters. Yeah. Bobby Walters. Don't butcher it just to make them feel good. No, I got it. You know, you got a bit initiation. It's eh, part of maybe, I guess it's it. We also have two new pilgrims joining the club as well. Uh, Nicholas Sandberg. 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 Uh, although I guess with, with the Nicholas. Uh, it's like Nicholas. N-I-K-L-A-S. Like, like St. Nicholas. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, also Keith uh, Michael. Mike, Mike Lee, Mike Lee. Oh, Mike, Michael. I, I heard the question in your voice. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Any, anyway, regardless, <laughs> uh, Sheila, Andrew, uh, Bobby Walters, uh, Nicholas Sandberg and Keith M. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are so thankful that, uh, man, you've agreed to, to join the country squire international pipe club and, uh, and support us here and what we're doing. And, uh, talking about pipes and pipe tobacco and pipe culture every week uh, here on the old interwebs. So, I got to tell you, if y'all um, keep this really great, if y'all keep this up, I mean, we're just a few members away, like literally just a very, very few members away from opening up the uh, the, the 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 Squire Club, the Squires Club the lounge, lounge, the online. lounge. I know, you know, we had set that bar and, and didn't really know when we would get close to that. We kind of just threw it out there as a you know a guesstimate. We didn't know if that would happen immediately or. Or over time, we figured it would happen at some point. Yeah, but, it, it's, uh, man, we're we're getting close, and at some point, you know, all these uh, amazing people that have joined us. I think we're up, you know, between I don't know, eighty or ninety people now, I can't, somewhere around that. I, I think eighty five, or from yeah. But mistaken, I mean, these I, are, I we're right. we're about to have a uh, a regular interaction with the, with each other uh, here within probably the next few weeks if this keeps up. Yeah, very excited. Um, so yeah, join join the club. Uh, if you go to countrysquareradio.com, you got a big bar right there that says uh, join the club. That'll take you directly to it. And again, big thanks to those of you who have joined and uh, welcome to the club. That's right. All right. So tonight we are talking casing. We're casing the joint. And that is not what, you know, that's not opening up your case and stuffing as much tobacco into it and then running out of the that. squire. Oh, okay. So stealing from the squire? Yeah, we, we no, let's not talk about that. <laughs> that that'll go on the next pet peeves uh, right. pi pipe pipe peeves pipe episode peeves, that's good that's good maybe we should call it pipe peeves i like it i yeah, like I it a we'll lot. talk about it all right so but no casing flavoring of course uh aromatics how do those tobaccos taste so delicious yeah um you know I, I, it's it's something a, a trick of the trade that i think the average pipe smoker might come in they get a cherry tobacco which is unfortunate in my opinion but a lot of people like it so i'm not judging <laughs> And they may not think, hmm, I wonder, <laughs> are there actual cherries in this tobacco? How on earth do they make it taste like this? <laughs> it reminds me, uh, you know, with, at the Chicago Pipe Show when I did that uh, small interview with Mike McNeil, right, from McClellan. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and, you know, I'm talking. we're talking about his award-winning uh, blend there, the best of show McClellan blend that they submitted, you know, and he's talking about it, how it's vanilla, and he, he's describing it in him, himself, and he's like, I mean, I, in, in that in great Mike McNeil voice that, you know, we can all do, he's just like, I think it's just awful. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, some people like that kind of stuff, so whatever. <laughs> that was a great interview, by the way, and if you haven't listened Absolutely. to that episode, please, please go back and listen to the the Chicago Pipe Show uh, episode, but yeah, so you know people come in all the time and they're like, uh, you know, how are these tobaccos flavored? Man, it's just amazing. I and mean, we know you blend these tobaccos here in your shop. Gosh, we you know we see we see you doing it, but but how do the flavors get in there? So there's a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts about that. Of course, um, you know I think some people actually think that uh, you know the tobacco is just literally um, kind of soaked in in something, whether it be a syrup or a 
you know, extract or something like, like that. A, a lot, like stewing in it. A lot, a lot of stewing in it kind yeah. of thing. A lot of folks, uh, you know, kind of imagine in their mind that uh, maybe flavoring is, is sprayed to it. Some people don't know if that's something we do here in the shop or if that's something that happens uh, elsewhere. Um, and, and, and then you've got the people kind of like what you had mentioned, you know, to, um, just in passing, uh, that actually think that, uh, you know, a piece of whatever the flavor is actually put in there. Like, right. am I, like, am I grinding up almonds and, and sprinkling the almond dust in the, in the tobacco Ooh. or, uh, or, <laughs> or, uh, you know, <laughs> Or, or, you know, am I slicing and drying up, uh, you know, maybe apples or cherries or something and kind of, you know, cu cutting them up and, and putting them in there. Um, or dried fruit of some sort. Yeah, dry, you know, any kind of... Small dried fruit. Any, any Like dried grapes. <laughs> Are you talking about raisins? <laughs> Are you talking about raisins, Bo? <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get this out there. <laughs> How do they make it taste like raisins? We're going to have we're gonna have a whole series of, of episodes just on what uh, makes John David... Uh, drink more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, you know, you've got these, you know, kind of questions about, well, you know, how, how are these things flavored? And uh, boy, the, a lot of flavoring is very, uh, very intense. A lot of flavoring, flavoring is a lot more nuanced in pipe tobacco. Um, and, and so a lot of, you know, flavor is very obvious, you know, when you smoke or, or even smell something, you're like, wow, that, that is apricot mm -hmm. or that is chocolate or whatever. Um, so we just thought we'd kind of unpack and, and un, you know, un, uncase that a little bit tonight. So, <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, yeah. When, when you're talking about flavoring pipe tobacco, there's kind of uh, th there's kind of kind of two different types of flavoring that we're going to we're going to discuss uh, briefly tonight. And and they both kind of serve different purposes. Uh, although they both impart some type of flavoring to to pipe tobacco, okay, uh, and that is casing, of course, which we've which we've mentioned a few times, but then also the topping process. Uh, the oh, those are not the same. Casing and topping are different. Oh, uh, okay, and, and 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 there are, there are other methods too. Uh, you know, they're actually we we joke about uh, people actually cutting. You know, maybe uh, putting actual pieces of fruit or something in in the pipe tobacco. But there are tobacconists that actually do that. There's a uh, there's a guy, um, Stephen Books, I believe is his name, uh, that owns the uh, House of Calabash in in Washington. Or what? Well, it's no, it's Oregon, Oregon State. Um, and uh, and Stephen actually, you, you order tobacco from him, and you might find like like a rose petal, really, or, or like a piece of oregano or something like that. Wow. Like it's it's out there. Yeah, I mean, he's been doing this <laughs> kind of stuff for years. I, I you know I haven't smoked any of his tobacco in quite some time, but. You know, I, I kind of get the impression that Stephen, for his, uh, this is a guy that you know is legendary in the in the small batch blending business, and and, and I, I think his you know personal spice cabinet at the house is just kind of his experiment room. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, he yeah. just kind of pulls from that, and maybe his garden as well. But it, it, would that be considered innovative or old school or both? Uh, I think it'd be both. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think it was you know probably pushing the envelope back when he started back in probably the fifties. Um, you know, he's been doing this literally that long. Wow. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think nowadays, you know, you just have so few people doing that kind of thing that, um, you know, unless, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'd be both. I think it'd be both. Um, but anyway, so, so there are ways of, of, you know, flavoring tobacco in that nature, but we're going to talk about the casing and the topping process tonight. Okay. Um, so let, we'll take, uh, take casing first. Uh, the, the, the casing is the subtle, and the smooth tones that you get from the tobacco, that's, that's the casing. Okay. So, so you've got a, you, you've got the kind of what you're doing to the tobacco initially, you know, as a constituent part. And then after the tobaccos are blended together in a recipe, you've got the, the more intense flavoring, which comes and that's going to, you know, leave it. Oh, wow. This tobacco is, you know, it tastes like this. You oh, know? And, and okay. that, that's going to be more of the topping route. So, so let me see if I'm following you correctly. Yeah, sure. so, so the idea is that you would not necessarily take, you know, the individual tobacco leaves like the one that are hanging right above us here. You yep. wouldn't take those and case those. It would be more, those would go into the blend yep. along with, you know, several other uh, blends as well. And then that concoction would then go into the casing process. Uh, yeah, or into the topping process. Or the topping process. Yeah, that's right, exactly yeah. right. Okay. So, you know, the, the tobaccos, now you, you know, there are exceptions to this, but, you know, my understanding is generally tobaccos are uh, cased as, you know, constituent leaves and then and then okay. are and then yeah. have a topping applied to them afterwards. Got so it. Okay. Um, now I'm sure I'm sure there's uh, depending on the manufacturer, all this kind of stuff is going to change. But um, but, you know, think of it as, you know, wow, I've got, you know, a, a bunch of burley here. I'm going to case this. And, and then once it's blended with some other stuff, we will, 
you know, we'll top it and um, and and go in a different direction. So, um, it, so the casing process, it's the most intensive uh, process that the tobacco goes through, you know, it, it, once it's stripped of all its stems and tears, right? So tobacco comes off the truck. We've actually seen it before, Bo. These, uh, yeah. you know, big, huge bales, they come from all over the world, It's incredible. Uh, different parts of the United States, but also, uh, you know, countries and, uh, places like Africa, Asia, you know, all over the place is where this premium pipe tobacco comes from. And the, um, you know, the stems and tears are, are shucked from this. It kind of goes through a whole process of things to get, uh, you know, get a consistent uh, leaf quality and all that stuff. And then, and then, you know, the tobacco basically goes through this giant, um, giant it, it tube, like a big uh, cylinder, kind of almost like a giant keg kind of thing, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's where the, um, the flavors of the, through the casing process are added. So uh, we're talking intense, intense heat. Um, and, and the, the, the flavor is typically applied uh, through steam. So you've got, um, you know, a, uh, a, a high temperature, you know, environment where, you know, tobacco is being, uh, has been uh, uh, treated with a flavor that it's mixed with water. Uh, the steam is then uh, applied to the tobacco and generally at the same time it's being turned. Uh, so that the tobacco can kind of mull over in that steam, right? And, so, and that would be in the kegs, because this is this is the thing, you know, a while back, I mean, you, you, you mentioned this, but uh, a while back we had an amazing opportunity to visit our friends at uh, STG. Um, yeah. And uh, in, w w it was in uh, Atlanta, is, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah. right outside of Atlanta. And uh, and actually go through the the process of their facility. It was and so see. exciting too, man. So kind of them to do that. For you me. know, I was fascinated by all of it because you have all of this amazing machinery that exists for like this one purpose, or well, several different purposes, but ultimately to bring us like all of these different tobaccos yeah. and everything. Yeah. And uh, and I I remember just I I I didn't know that the process was that involved. That complicated. You know what I mean? You, you, you think when it's pipe tobacco that you almost just, you know, you've got a couple of maybe old guys in there like taking the stems off the leaves and then <laughs> taking the leaves and putting them in some pot with right. some syrup and right. then, you know, they let it dry out and they then they rake it up and bag it, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> man, I mean, this is this is a very sophisticated operation in a, in a um, you know, warehouse uh, kind of industrialized environment where, you know, trained professionals that have to wear, you know, safety goggles and go through all kinds of, you know, federal standards and all this stuff are, are putting this stuff together, uh, particularly at a company like Lane that makes some of the most, uh, you know, popular tobaccos in the world, yeah. certainly in America and some of the, some of the best. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating to know that, wow, they had to spend, you know, like, you know, several million dollars on this one piece of equipment that only does this one, uh, this one piece of the process. And they have to, you know, hope that that piece of equipment gets them through 60 years of making pipe tobacco yeah. or something. I mean, it's yeah. just really amazing. Cause they had some it's old awesome. school stuff. They I mean, did. they had some very like, you know, brand new out of the box stuff. Then they had some, some Man, of those like some trays, of those, everything. Some of those, uh, some of those pieces of equipment, uh, you know, I mean, they were, they were over 70 years old, but I'm sure up to code. They they were of course and and still working perfectly. <laughs> they really were. I mean, it was it was amazing. Yeah, it was it was definitely um, incredible. So anyway, you, you've got these you know tobacco once it's uh, in its more pure form, it's going uh, meaning it's been you know kind of in the in in the quality state they want to. It's mm -hmm. been you know stripped of all its stems and tears. It's going to go through this big keg where the steam of is is going to be mixed with some type of flavoring uh, and then applied to the tobacco. Um, and so the steam allows the tobacco as it's being tossed and turned in this environment to kind of absorb into those leaves. Right. Um, the only thing about that, of course, you've got a really at, at the end of this process, a very mushy kind of moist, uh, you know, just wet tobacco. Um, and so the tobacco has to be dried out afterwards. Obviously. And at this at this stage in the game, we're talking. I mean, we're talking like tobacco that's it's not it, it's not in leaf form. It's in shredded form. Um, yeah, d generally at this point, it, the tobacco has been in, made into a certain type of cut. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm just, I'm thinking about just that, that spinning process. Cause you know, I mean, you've got yeah. uh, whiskey twist and, and various different yeah. twist tobaccos that, that don't necessarily seem to have that kind of. And again, that, that may change based on, uh based on manufacturer. Sure. You know, I mean, that's, uh, again, these are all, everyone's got their own tricks of the trade. Everyone has their own, uh, you know, secret recipe and all this kind of stuff. We're painting in broad brush strokes tonight, but, of course. but, uh, yeah, typically, you know, you're going to have the tobacco, uh, gotten to the point where it's in the cut, 
uh, and then it goes into these, um, you know, goes into these big keg type things that that are going to apply the the flavors to them. And so uh, the tobacco has to be dried. Um, but you know, it, when you get done with this, you've got a tobacco that uh, has a a really nice light uh, a light flavoring applied to it um, that has been dried out, and so you know it it is ready then for the topping. Uh, part of the stage. The the point of casing, a lot of folks think of, okay, I'm going to think of casing as, you know, that's where you get some kind of real syrupy, wet tobacco. Because in their mind, I think a lot of folks think the casing, it goes in this big case. and It's like you encased. Know, it's, yeah, it's encased. So, that, so they're thinking, oh, it's you're just sitting there soaking in this stuff. And so, you know, gosh, most, uh, you know, most aromatics must be real heavily cased or something. But the, the point of the casing is kind of interesting. And, uh, and our, our friend Russ Roulette on, on the internet, uh, who is a, just an incredible blender, has a lot of a lot of neat things to say about this process. You can look it up uh, at your leisure. But uh, Russ points out that you know casing is kind of is kind of the the point of casing is kind of to take the the leaf of tobacco and just kind of round off the hard edges. You're not trying to put just a real distinctive flavor on the tobacco. The tobacco it might the casing process might involve something like uh, molasses or aniseed. Um, you know, it, it's something that is maybe sugary, but the point of the casing process is not to give it its, its unique distinctive flavor. The point is to make the tobacco, um, more well-rounded. So, you know, if you, huh. for instance, if you took Burley right out of the ground, mm -hmm. um, you know, Burley is going to have kind of a, uh, as, as great as it is, as much as we love Burley, <clears throat> It's going to have kind of a kind of a sourness to the to the leaf naturally. Really, um, and that's just something that a lot of folks don't know. So huh. even in its unflavored, quote unquote, unflavored form, you know, a lot of burleys are going to go through the casing process just to kind of just to kind of round off the edges a little bit. Interesting, because you know, burley is something that so prolific. It's yeah, everywhere. I mean, it's it's a, it's a. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's kind of like a seasoning tobacco in the sense that it's maybe not the season per se, but it's it's a component tobacco. That's right. It's a it's a component of, yeah, of yeah, a yeah. blend. That's right. Interesting. So, and, and a lot of blends are based on burley, uh, you know, but but burley, it's it's everywhere. It's lurking in non aromatics and non-aromatics alike. And and you know, a lot of uh a lot of that burley has been cased to some degree to just kind of kind of round off those sharp mm -hmm. those sharp harsh edges and and so think of um you know the the best example I could kind of think of when I was trying to uh, draw an analogy to this just to explain it to our listeners is it's almost like when you are brining a turkey like Ooh. okay so you got a turkey but you want it to be like soft and moist and just not as harsh and dry yeah, yeah yeah and you're not really changing the flavor of it but you just yeah you base that yeah you're just brining it you know to kind of get it to just get it you know kind of to the consistency or the texture that you're that you're going for you, you, you know dunk I mean? it in salt water for a while yeah yeah I, I don't know and there's something that happens in that process that just you know you're not really changing the flavor of the turkey necessarily but you're just taking those harsh edges off um if that makes sense and every turkey needs its its uh, harsh edges taken off <laughs> Hey man, turkey, Inclu including the turkey to my left. So, hey, um, so, so that's harsh. So that's kind of off with this four roses. Right no, now. I, yeah, I know, I know. You must have a lot of hard edges because that's a that's a healthy pour there. I'm just kidding. Um, so so that's the casing process. We'll t we'll kind of switch gears and talk about the topping process. Topping these are tobacco flavors that are going to have um, you know, more when you pick up your blend of you know, let's say uh, you know, th uh, you know the three cherry from McClelland or uh, gosh, I don't know, just something crazy aromatic. I'm looking at the 10 section over here, like uh, moon trance CAO tobacco or, you know, uh, Eileen's dream, Irish cream or any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of uh, mm -hmm. Panama Jack. Uh, we've got the, uh, the pina colada flavor over there. Uh, Wait, think, does Panama Jack have a pina colada flavor? It does. It does. And you know, we talked about their mango actually I remember on, uh, that. in one of our tobacco talk Man, episodes, ever but... since that episode, I've been like, I see, like, Panama Jack just stares at me, literally stares at me whenever we do the show. But... Well, you should take it home so I can stare at you at the home. There's so many different flavors. But then there, there, you got to catch them all. You got to, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well then. But uh, with, with the topping process, this is where a lot of your distinctive flavors are going to come from. Okay. So, uh, once the tobacco is blended into its final recipe, uh, the top topping or top dressing, a lot of times it's called dressing, uh, is, is added. Uh, and, and this is going to happen in most of your aromatic tobaccos, particularly your, your you know heavier aromatic tobaccos. Uh, topping 
it can have a variety of flavors. And, and I love the process that it goes through because a lot of these, you know, high end blenders think, you know, Cornell and Deal, uh, McClellan, GLP. So, I mean, just some of the best uh, blenders in our country. Um, you know, when, when they put together these toppings, it is a very specific process. I mean, they, they are getting in their bakery, you know, that their, their secret kitchen, right. Oh, when no man. one's looking and they are putting together all kinds of ingredients, just like, you know, they might, the, the, the chef might at your favorite five-star rest, you know, restaurant or something. And, 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 and they are coming up with these amazing concoctions that, that literally involves, you know, real, real fruit or seeds or, you know, bakery items like chocolate or caramel, or, I mean, they're using actual products Man. like that to, to, you know, make the, the flavorings that are very distinctive on your favorite aromatic tobacco. Um, and, and that's the beauty of the topping process is that, you know, you're getting this from maybe real oranges or real lemons or real, uh, you know, real cinnamon sticks or, or something like that. Pretty well, awesome. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, you think of that kitchen mentality, especially because of all the, you know, the flavoring that's involved, but I mean, to some extent it's, it's the combination of a, of a kitchen and a chemistry set, right? Yeah. No, like, that's right. Because in order to like to get something down to its place, we actually um uh, in 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 Jackson uh, every Wednesday there's a group that gets together uh, for for this thing called One Million Cups, and it's like all these different uh, you know business people. A lot of times it's technology, but that's it can cool. be anybody yeah. that's doing business. And uh, we had, there's this guy recently who came by. He's he's very particular about yeast. Like he cultivates a lot of yeast for beer makers, <laughs> like for small batch. I'm just really into yeast. Well, I mean, but that's the oh, thing. I mean, that's his thing. That's it's, great. It's yeah. important as if part of the beer, process. You, or beer or bread for that matter. But yeah, he was talking to, he was talking about specifically like if if you want you know you've got these like you know uh, craft breweries and and like these these small batch beer makers and such that are looking for like very unique flavors that that have to be cultivated at the yeast level as crazy as that sounds yeah, no that's right and uh and so you know he was talking about the process and he and as he defined the flavors and going out and finding like these fruits like he went to like uh africa and found this very like hard to get to fruit and cultivated this yeast and then tried to get like a patent on it as well it was interesting crazy yeah, stuff yeah but but you know it it starts off like talking kitchen but then by the time you get the final product, it goes chemistry. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's fascinating. It's just, it's a strange hybrid. And I think of course, pipe tobacco, uh, embodies that well, you know, and, 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 you know, in, in this episode, we're not even talking about the things that they, you know, do to help, a you know, help a tobacco stay moist in the can or, uh, you know, stay fresh over time or any of that kind of stuff. You know, we're just talking about the flavoring, you know, process. And so there's a whole, uh, just a whole lot of science that goes into this, but, you know, at this point in the process, we are talking about getting in the kitchen. Um, and so a, a lot of times in the topping process, uh, kind of, a uh, I, have you ever made a mint julep? Bo? Oh yes. Okay. So, so, you know, with the mint julep, it, it requires any good Southern gentleman has drunk a, it, has drunk or drunken it has been drunken <laughs> drinking a mint julep <laughs> accurate on all accounts on all accounts right, right? <laughs> and and with a mint julep you have to make a simple syrup right mm -hmm. so you're mixing maybe four roses bourbon or maybe uh you know your other favorite whiskey with with some crushed up uh mint and and a and a nice simple syrup and, and Talking so, mint and bourbon i am so there i'm in right i'm totally in uh, and sugar water, yeah. Woo! Uh, but you know, the syrup is uh, kind of a nice uh, way in order to you know apply the flavoring process or uh, apply these flavors that you kind of concocted uh, to the tobacco to make sure that it sticks on there, that it's very uh, you know it permeates the tobacco, that it's going to stay there and not not evaporate or anything like that. So mm -hmm. oftentimes, a simple syrup is. Uh, is is produced and and then they kind of make a brew. They kind of uh, get this syrup going and then they add a bunch of uh, add a bunch of flavors to it. You know, they might add uh, you know think of like a big strainer that has you know things like oranges and cherries and lemons and cinnamon sticks and uh, peppermint. I mean, li literally yeah. anything you could could imagine. Uh, you know, a lot of those things go into the actual. Uh, the actual uh, simple syrup that they're kind of producing here. Uh, a lot of times alcohol is involved and alcohol is great because what happens is it lets the flavor impart to the tobacco, but over time the alcohol just evaporates. And so you're not left with this, uh, you know, kind of drunken, you know, tobacco, although, you know, sometimes that would be nice, I but, mean, yeah. but um, it, you know, but you've got this tobacco that, you know, is actually uh, flavored with the ingredients, but, but, you know, the actual alcohol content uh, evaporates off. So it tends to be, um, just really nice. But again, this, this portion is where you're going to get all those really awesome, uh, crazy flavors. There's a, there's a really neat, um, 
uh, YouTube video that you can watch on this. And uh, our, our friend Jeremy Reeves, who's the master blender at Cornell and Deal. Yeah, big uh, shout we, out to Jeremy. He, 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 love Jeremy, a uh, good friend, and just a just an incredible guy, super thoughtful uh, person, and 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 a good, uh, obviously a great blender. But uh, Jeremy uh, actually produced a video of uh, of kind of a blending or a, or a you know making a top dressing like this. Uh, I think it was last year at some point, but um, or maybe a year before that. It, it's been within the last few years. You can find it on YouTube on Cornell and Deal's uh, channel. But it's really cool how they he actually shows going in and you know producing some of the uh, the top dressing for one of their tobaccos and. Um, it, you know, this is, this is something that's not rocket science. I mean, you can even do it your house, you know, it's kind of yeah. neat. Yeah. So, and by the way, Jeremy rock star in the industry. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think has a long future ahead of them. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Cornell and deal, they are just, you know, it, it's like Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, right? You go in, <laughs> you, you, you literally, you literally, except with Cornell and deal, it's like, you know, 431 flavors right, or, right, right. Or, or maybe 831 play you know every every other week they're coming out with something just awesome and exciting and uh you know that they, they've kind of mastered the small batch process well they'll they'll crank out some uh really cool unique flavors you know there might be 800 tens of it and then when it's gone it's just gone you know and uh and, and we love that and, and i think jeremy is kind of the king at pushing the envelope with those with those interesting unique flavors so um big, big shout out to him and the and the great folks at cornell and deal but um Absolutely. Anyway, so you've got, you know, this kind of, uh, th these kind of two, two processes, the casing point, which is kind of to round off those hard edges again, kind of give the tobacco kind of the characteristics overall that you want it to have, uh, some softness, take off maybe any harshness or bitterness that might come from the, you know, general tobacco, uh, profile itself. I mean, would that be considered bringing out or, or maybe accentuating the, the flavor of the tobacco itself? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think to some degree, okay. kind of, yeah, I mean, you are altering the flavor right. of the tobacco to some degree, but you, I think it is, it may be more akin to bringing out the elements of the tobacco that you want to shine sure. rather than the elements that you want to, you know, it distract, that, that would distract from that. It's, it's Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe salt and pepper on the, on the steak. It, yeah. it doesn't get in the way of the steak flavor per se, but no, it yeah. obviously does add something to the experience. Yeah. You're at, you're accenting pieces of this. You're so, not drenching it in Worcestershire. No, that's it. That's yeah, exactly okay. right. Got yeah. It. So, you, you know, it, it's interesting. A lot of folks, uh, you know, they think of, okay, well, I smoke non-aromatics. So how is this, how, how does this apply to me at all? <laughs> right. We've got a, a lot of, a lot of listeners that, uh, don't smoke aromatic tobaccos and, um, you know, the, and they think, uh, well, you know, I don't even smoke products that are, that are cased or topped. And what, what's interesting, and I love our, our friend. That's not the way they're saying it. You know, they're saying like, no, I don't even smoke this. <laughs> Aromatics rarely. <yeah>. The, yeah. <laughs> aromatic tobacco. <laughs> Kafal, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, they said it just like that, just actually. like that, yeah. just like that. Uh, but <laughs> you know, it, a lot of folks think that you know they don't, they don't. This doesn't really apply to any of the tobaccos that they smoke because we they only smoke, um, you know, unflavored tobaccos. But what's interesting, in in our friend Greg Peace, who uh, is the is the Greg Peace behind GL Peace Tobacco, another and, rock star, uh, just another rock star and an amazing blender in his own right. Uh, which has some really sophisticated blends out there. I really encourage y'all to to look at uh, the things he's created. But um, you know, but Greg has written extensively about the casing and topping process and how these these flavorings are lurking everywhere, li literally everywhere. I mean, in in places that you uh, you wouldn't necessarily expect, uh, even your quote unquote non aromatic tobacco. And so, um, you know, that's why it, nowadays it's kind of hard to look at a tin of tobacco and say you know, and just make two piles, right? Aromatic, non-aromatic, aromatic, non-aromatic. Non you know, th there's a lot of, uh, th there's a lot of nuance there. And, you know, maybe your favorite non-aromatic, you know, quote unquote, non-aromatic tobacco, we put it firmly in the non-aromatic camp, but, but there's some flavorings going on there. there there's some things that uh, are changing, uh, you know, the, the constituent flavor of the, the, or the, the flavor of the constituent leaves, um, you know, maybe to round off those harsh edges or maybe to, you know, may maybe just one of the leaves is topped in the entire uh, mixture. And then that one topped leaf is added to the rest of the tobaccos. There's all kinds of interesting things going on here. I, I think my favorite example of, of, of that is that Scottish mixture by Mac Barron is considered an aromatic tobacco. Mm. And, and that's always fascinated me because when I, when I smoke Scottish mixture, I, you know, to me that tastes like a, 
you know, non-aromatic kind of Virginia burley complex mixture. It is a great. It's a tobacco tobacco. It's right a there. tobacco tobacco. Yeah. It's a great workhorse tobacco. It's one of those things you can smoke all day, every day, and mm. not get sick of. Mm -hmm. um, but but it is technically considered an aromatic tobacco, and that's because you know th there's enough going on in Scottish mixture where they've kind of monkeyed with some of those leaves. Uh, just to give it, just to give it some some smoother edges on, on there, and so um, you know, it, even your favorite non aromatic tobacco might, you know, might technically you know have some aromatic components. In oh, it. So, so something to think about. So, oh, so something take to think about. That snobs. Yeah. <laughs> of, which we know you're. We know snobs are not listening because, of course, if you're listening right now, and I'm not certainly a not a snob. No, I, no. I never make myself like I'm better than. We, we are so better than those snobs. As out I smoke there. my Castello. <laughs> 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 no, you know my humility because I'm drinking this, you know, Boodle stuff. So anyway, no. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm proud of my humility, but um, you're, yeah, you're very humble about it. So the the, the cool thing about this, and, and this is kind of where we'll leave it tonight, but the, the cool thing about this is, um, you know, with the topping uh, process and the, the, not necessarily the casing process, but the topping process, you can, you could kind of do some of this stuff at home, actually, which is kind of fun. You know, we've had uh, customers and 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 listeners that have experimented themselves with mm. with flavoring their own tobacco, and this might be as simple as you know getting your favorite whiskey and just dousing your you know a, a tobacco in that whiskey. Like, let's say you took this bottle of Four Roses and um, you know sprayed a whole bunch of it on maybe a Burley or yeah, a Cavendish yeah, yeah. or something of that nature, and uh, let it sit for a bit, dry out, maybe, maybe spray some more on it, toss it and, and just, and just see what happens. You can go, you know, as simple as that. Uh, you can actually, uh, you know, buy, you know, some, uh, unflavored Cavendish actually, uh, Cornell and Deal produces a great unflavored Cavendish or, uh, maybe a straight burly, like, you know, from the folks at McClelland or something, uh, just our unflavored burly and take these tobaccos and, and, and actually kind of, you know, fidget, you know, with them and, and make your own, uh, make your own syrup and, you know, and, and actually, you know, a, a lot of folks, what they've done is they have taken some of these, uh, you know, incredible uh, baking items or, or maybe even cut up cherries or uh, oranges or things like that, actually put them in like a coffee filter and, and, and boiled them in a syrup there for a while. I mean, you can do these kinds of things and, uh, and, and then apply them to the tobacco and just see what happens. Well, we're know? not, we're not necessarily advocating for that. I mean, you know, I'm just envisioning somebody like, like trying to, uh, to, uh, top <laughs> their tobacco in vodka and then later trying to smoke it and think of, it's not, know, yeah, like, I mean, it, into yeah, we don't want this to turn into like a meth lab, <laughs> right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's but, right. But Breaking yeah. squire. Yeah, now, now, again, you know, this is something just fun to do on the side. This is not something that you're going to produce a bunch of. Um, and, and obviously you want to be really careful with, with this kind of thing, uh, because you know, what, one thing, the big, the big guys have that you don't have in your kitchen are a lot of things that can help, uh, fight mold on tobacco or, you know, keep tobacco moist for a long period of time. Um, those are things that you don't necessarily, you know, have readily available, you know, food grade ways to combat, you know, mold in a tobacco or something. So, you know, if you do any of this kind of stuff, you know, make you a little batch of it and, you know, let it dry out, you know, smoke it and enjoy it. But, you know, this is probably not something that if you do try to flavor your own tobacco, you're going to want to sit on for a really long period of time, if that makes sense. So uh, just a, just a little note to to the to the word to the wise there. yeah the hobbyist yeah. You, you know people try to to um find flavors in a lot of different ways uh you know you, you talk about listeners you know uh, who experiment with with casing and topping yeah. that sort of thing and you know obviously uh man i, I feel like I've, I've learned a lot here but let me let me tell you about somebody uh, a listener that we have that that decided to get a little experimental this week in terms of trying to define flavors of his own. Oh, we're pivoting here. Oh, well, is, is that all right? Is no, that, that that's great. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I thought we actually, you know what? I, we, I sensed that we were pivoting and I thought we were about to talk about Missouri Meerschaum. Well, but which but, we will at some point. No, that, that's a great thing. What I'm about to say is unfortunately, you, you were very... about to do it so flawlessly though, that I, that <laughs> I, I, I thought you were leading me down that trail and you actually got me. But 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 anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so, no, no, so, no. so there was an experiment going on. Our friends at Missouri Meerschaum, I, I I would I would hate to even bring them into what I'm about to say because what I'm about to say is is probably uh, one of the most offensive stories that I think you'll ever hear on Country Squire Radio. Gosh, is this safe for work? To date. Okay. I, barely. Barely. Okay. You know what? Okay. Barely. Uh so I, I'm sitting at the uh, the computer, or my phone, whatever it is, you know, the internet, that you get the internet on so many devices these days. Uh, at, at some point last week, and I get a, I get a tweet 
from uh, a friend of the show, club member, uh, someone who uh, you and I have dined with, have drunken with, have yeah. gotten drunken with. Have drunken with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mark VV. Shout out to Mark VV. Oh, yeah, Mark. That's right. Uh, and, and, you know, I've got nothing but love for Mark VV up until, ladies and gentlemen, what occurred this week. Now, now of course, you know, you mentioned at the top of the Did show. Did he run over your dog or something? You know, I wish he had. That's <laughs> <laughs> not true. <laughs> That's horrible. That is horrible. <laughs> I love, I love Isley. Uh, <laughs> Isley, if you're listening, how? You know what? I wish he had. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Here's the thing. So, so I get a I get a tweet in from Mark VV. Now you mentioned obviously at the at the top of the show some of the amazing amazing blends that you've been coming out with here at the Country Squire. Some amazing uh, things to come as well. But yeah, sure. Um, uh, what what has some people have called God's gift to the tobacco industry? Uh, uh the White Rose. That's right. The White Rose, uh, of course, uh, a God's blend. gift to the tobacco industry. So, some, exactly, hey, exactly. Some people have called it that. No, that's that. Some some people. Some people have. And here's the deal. Of course, uh, the White Rose is an amazing uh, tobacco, honey flavored. I mean, you know, that, you talk about that's a that is a difficult flavor to pull off in yeah. the tobacco world. And, yeah. and, and uh, somehow the genius sitting next to me right here. Oh, we worked hard at it. I mean, in, in sp you, you don't know how it happened per se. Just was it was it divine intervention? I hesitate to say. But regardless, you've got the White Rose, amazing pipe tobacco. But you also, you know, we talked about it. The reason that that even exists, uh, in, in part, is to help support the show, but, so be sure to, to check it out. But the other thing is to, to really act as a counter uh, uh, to a, a just a, a horrid. Just kind of a, yeah, a heretical, just, you know, abomination of blunt. You know, I, I mean, it's delicious, but... Right. It is unfortunately named Lancaster, and of course, you know, right. War, War of the Roses. For this is your yeah, first we've, episode. We've gone into this, you know, ad infinitum. Ad infinitum, of course. So, so you've got Lancaster, you've got White Rose. Mark VV, he tweets me last week. He uh, doesn't talk in this video. This is how sinister this is. He just, he just, the video current turns on, and he shows two jars. One is White Rose, the other is Lancaster. He takes a pinch of White Rose. I, it's hard for me to even talk about this, honestly. He takes a pinch of white rose, he puts it in a bowl, he takes a pinch of Lancaster, and you know he should have thrown it in the trash, but do you know what he did with that pinch of Lancaster? What, did he eat it? No, he, he I wish he would have, and he wished he would have choked, but no! <laughs> he mixed it with the white rose. Oh, he put them together! He put them together. He mixed them together as if they were the daughter of, uh, um, oh. I, I can't wait Edward, for this analogy. Uh, Richard, no, Richard. Richard, <laughs> as if they were Richard's daughter and whoever the Lancaster guy that she married was. History lesson from Bo York. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what needs to come for me. Point being, this abomination of tobaccos. Which so he kind of made this, like, you know, it, it thing, like this terrible concoction, almost this Frankenstein type blend. I, when I hear like, yeah, like he mixed these two like almost oil and water kind of things but I mean it's it, honey it, and caramel so I mean like you know you got <laughs> I, I don't know what he was thinking I know well, I know what he was thinking and it, it's it's shame on you sir that's all I'll say actually how, how, did he say how it came out I, I think he regretted it <laughs> you know because that is how we got the tutors right that is, that's, <laughs> exactly. that, that is how we got the tutors yeah so it, a, a mixing of the roses so uh yeah hey interesting well hey, yeah let, hey, let mark, that be... that, hey uh, mark, mark has done his own experimenting in his own little chem lab and uh you know it, it supposedly has lived to tell about well it. I'll, I, he I'll hasn't say been this. very active tonight but uh supposedly has uh, lived to live to tell about he knew it. this he knew that the, uh, the the harshness was coming so he's been <laughs> he's been intentionally sitting <laughs> sitting out the memes th this evening <laughs> but i will say this that's the wrong way to experiment with various blends together but hey yeah. Yeah. If you want to get various blends what's, and yeah, mix them together, the right try some to different things. You know, I'm saying you, you can mix some white rose with some stuff, just not that Lancaster. Anything else, that's a great thing to do. But while you're you know challenging all of these different flavors and uh, uh, components of various tobaccos together, as you are, are finding this one has this casing, this one has this topping, you want to mix it together. You probably don't want to mix them together in you know uh, your Perique pipe. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, that that's makes not sense. The way to go. It makes sense. You want a pipe that's going to be a clean smoke every single time. Uh, that's a great pipe for sampling various tobaccos and enjoying them to their fullest. And of course, you cannot find better pipes to do so than the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. That's right. Missouri Meerschaum, of course, uh, an American legend, uh, which makes uh, you know just incredible corn cob pipes. Uh, these are pipes that are all uh, crafted very finely. Uh, that uh, some of the designs and and models go back literally a uh, hundred years. Uh, but these are uh, in, in, you know great high quality pipes that are incredibly affordable. Uh, and allow you the opportunity to 
uh, you know, have a pure smoke for that first time uh, with a tobacco that you're just really interested in tasting the uh, the the purest form of the the leaf itself. So if you've got a tobacco that you know maybe you're picking out off the shelf that uh, you know is a, is a topping that's a real interest to you or something that uh, is kind of unique and you're like, man, I, I I'm so excited about this, but I don't know. Uh, you know, what to smoke it in to, to get the most pure form of its flavor. Uh, man, Missouri Meerschaum uh, is going to make the pipe for you. Absolutely. And the great thing is, is that, you know, with the pipes that they have, it's not just, you know, a, a utility pipe. I mean, you can look pretty, pretty sweet while you're doing it. You know, I, we, we mentioned, we referenced this pipe so many times and, and it's because it's one of my favorites, but given the fact that we refer to mint juleps this evening, I think we'll uh, have to make mention of the contra gentleman. Oh, the old Missouri contra Mission. gentleman. That's right. Uh, uh, <laughs> one of the, one of the, uh, one of the best selling uh, Missouri Meerschaum pipes, actually, certainly at the country squire, uh, Missouri, uh, Missouri Meerschaum, the country gentleman, it's a, uh, a real classic shaped pipe, but what people like about it is it's a generous sized bowl. Um, it comes in a bent and a straight variety, uh, but the country gentleman it has uh, a lot of folks are really taken by the uh, the subtle uh, black stain that has been partially sanded off. It's just a really such, nice such a cool uh, kind of a bicolor look there, and uh, and and so it's just a really uh, really sharp pipe. Uh, one of those that you uh, can pull out, and people won't be like a corn cob pipe. They'll be like. A corn cob pipe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can get on board with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it's a great shape, feels good in your hand, and has again has a generous bowl. And uh, we we certainly encourage uh, everyone to add a Missouri Meerschaum Country Gentleman to their collection. Pipe question of the week this week comes in from Gene. Gene actually joining us tonight uh, as his first live show. Oh, that's great. Hey, Gene. What's up, Gene? Come on in, bud. We see it. Like I, I always love like the the first listener live show experience because some of the tweets come in by like, what do I got myself into? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what I, have I done? We see you, Gene. We we've got a we've got a few few folks actually joining us for the first time on the live That's show. Great. So welcome, welcome. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Gene who writes in says, does crumble cake do anything to enhance the flavor? Yeah. Uh, he says he's usually a ribbon person, and I got to say, so am I. Yeah. No, cr crumble cake is great. It it does. Uh, you know, I think what's most fun about crumble cake. Um, it works really good where you've got uh, some leaves that are dry and some leaves that are wet and they start uh, kind of playing together. And so, you know, when all this pressure is uh, is is put on this tobacco and you, let's say you've got a, a leaf of burley that's right next to a leaf of perique, um, all that pressure, uh, you know, on, on, in, in the tobacco, especially if you let it sit there for a while, it's going to um, it, it will. It'll it'll change the um, the characteristics of it, particularly with some age. You know, after mm. some age, you've mm. got uh, complex you know uh, uh, reactions going on uh, with the sugars that are in um, you know uh, th these tobaccos, and and I think the pressure. Uh, can really can really help with that. It's so, like it's 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 together. They they've got all that age there. It's like they're reunited wow. and it feels so good. I thought we were gonna get out of the episode without Bo singing. Perique but... and Burley smoking <laughs> like they should. That's what this question's about. Why did I have to run out of ice? Because I want to <laughs> refill. I want to refill so bad. It's terrible. Uh, someone help me. You know, it, 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 and let's let's quickly, uh, you know, define crumble cake. So, so you've got, um, you know, a, a crumble cake and a plug are different types of tobacco, right? So, a, a, a a crumble cake is the tobacco. Let's say, you know, we're sitting in front at the tobacco bar here at the Country Squire. Uh, behind Bo and I are the several uh, jars of tobacco. If you're watching live, you can see them behind me. And and a crumble cake would be like me taking uh, what's in one of these jars and then applying a lot of pressure to it. So yep. you've got kind of a, you know, a ribbon cut tobacco or a... Um, you know, a, uh, a, a cube cut tobacco, a, a shag tobacco, something of this nature, and or maybe even a ready rub tobacco. And you've, uh, you, you've, you know, put a lot of pressure on it so that it kind of sticks together uh, and, and the flavors can marry and all that. You can do a crumble cake easily at home uh, with your with your favorite tobaccos. Uh, a plug tobacco is different because a plug tobacco is actually uh, kind of like a crumble cake, but it's made with whole leaf. Yeah. And so you've got, uh, you know, the whole leaves of tobacco, um, it, you know, that are pressed into a giant brick. Um, and, and so think of, I'm trying to think the best way to describe it. Like when, when you buy, for instance, a, uh, a tin of, uh, one of our favorites, uh, or like golden sliced, for oh, instance, yeah, yeah. Uh, which we talk about a lot in the shop, uh, made by, uh, our friends at STG. Delicious. Um, when you're when you look at a slice of orlic, you know the the flake of orlic, you're looking from a you're looking at a cross section of that plug. You're looking at a piece of plug tobacco that has been cut. Okay, 
if you if you bought the plug, you would actually get a little brick of the of the whole plug. Mm -hmm. um, a, a crumble cake is different in that a crumble cake is a ribbon cut or a shredded tobacco. It's 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 a tobacco that's been taken from. Uh, you know, just any kind of, uh, you know, already torn apart, ready rubbed type of uh, thing and then put into a into a brick or a kind of a brownie form. Um, and so the, anyway, just some nuances there. But, yeah, I think the crumble cake can uh, can add a lot to to the tobacco, particularly if you're willing to give it some uh, some time to marry up some age on a crumble cake really, really is uh, really is nice. Yeah. That's a great question, Gene. We really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, real, real good in. question. Yeah. And hey, if you got a pipe question of the week, you can send it in uh, Country Squire Radio or show at CountrySquireRadio.com. Again, that's show at CountrySquireRadio.com. Quick fire, Chris Jones. Ow! All right. This comes in from St. Bubbles, who's a member over at thispipelife.com. St. Bubbles. You got to love it, man. I, what is his feast day? Do you know? Uh, St. Bu St. Bubbles. Is that <laughs> The is patron that, saint of tidying up, I think. Is, 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 that, is that what it is? Something is that, like okay, that. Okay, St. Bubbles. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. Uh, of course, thispipelife.com, <laughs> an amazing online community. Stay tuned for a moment here to hear more. Here we go. Quick five questions. Are we you ready? Get, we get a St. Bubbles amulet to hang up at the squire. <laughs> Maybe he's this patron saint of tobacconists. Uh, you know? I, actually, I think I think there is a... I, I actually did research on this one time. Really? I, I think the patron saint of tobacco, maybe, is a guy... You know, I'm not Catholic. But I, I think it's a guy named St. Anthony Claret, oh, if I'm remembering correctly. Interesting. And he was a, a priest in Cuba. Wow. That someone would someone, make some sense. Yeah, it would. So, someone should should check me on that. But mm -hmm. I, I think that's a thing. My grandmother yeah. um, uh, and, and my grandfather is super Catholic. Like 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 a Shiite Catholic? Dude, I'm. Uh, she, he's he's super. Like, like he was... <laughs> He knew Mother Teresa like he he was like like you know hard he and, and still is he's still right. he's still kicking it right. Um, my grandmother, uh, his wife, has a um, has a book of saints like a big book of saints like saints you've never even heard of. I'll, I, I'll, I bet I bet that guy's in there. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. All right. So, <laughs> but our our very own Saint Bubbles from this pipeline.com. Bubbles, right? Uh, he writes in. Ready for this? <laughs> yep. Golf or tennis? Tennis, uh, absolutely not. So much more action than golf. Well, that okay. Wait, are we talking watching or doing both? That look, the worst things I've ever said. I, I've talked about this before all the time. The worst things I've ever said in my life have been number one on the golf course, <laughs> or number two on the show at the egg. No, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. no, I'm just kidding. at the egg bowl. The egg bowl is the annual game between Mississippi State and Ole Miss. That's, yeah, uh, that Mississippi State and that other school. And, and and the worst thing I, I have the worst things I've ever uttered on this earth that I will have to account for most uh, on, on my tape reel uh, with St. Peter is uh, it have happened during one of those two things. Golf is not good for my spirit. Cl I'm just gonna, I'm just going to tell you right now. Wow. OK. Yeah. yeah it, it's really bad for my spirit. I hate golf. I mean, it's so it's so boring. And and you know, I tried because my grandfather on the other side of the family, um, uh, before he passed, was like he was a big golfer. Like that was like how he got his exercise in at the at the tail end there. Yeah. And I tried. I I went with him, but I got to tell you, I was so bored out of my mind. Uh, I did like that you got to go to the clubhouse afterwards to get a sandwich and a little coke. They brought it yeah, out to you. Yeah, that was, it's nice. That yeah. was classy. But um, but here's the other thing. Tennis, on the other hand, I also find extremely boring. Like I'm just not a big tennis guy. There's just people moving around, right? I mean, that's you could argue that's all sports, but there's just they're just in a contained box. It's not a whole lot of running. And if I had to choose, which I guess that's what this is, I'm going to go with tennis as well. Okay, all good. Right. Yeah, we're on uh, the same page. Oxford shirt or polo shirt? Ooh, do you know what the difference there? Yeah, Oxford shirt is one that buttons up all the way. It's not like a dress shirt. It's kind of like what you got now, except it doesn't have buttons that go all the way down, and you haven't buttoned the three buttons that you Man, have. At the shut top. up! This is a, a little hippie <laughs> shirt. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, an Oxford shirt's like it's something you wear a tie with, and a polo shirt obviously is you know has a little collar. Um, probably an Oxford shirt because it's more versatile. I can roll the sleeves up. Yeah, and I can uh, or I, or I can let the sleeves down. Wear a tie. Wear it with a blazer. Wear it with jeans. Yeah. You could do uh, tucked, untucked. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to go with the Oxford shirt all, all the way. Polish shirt. Yeah. just uncomfortable. The texture's no good. Uh, <laughs> mustard greens or collard greens? Collard greens. Yes. Delicious. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, roses or wildflowers? I'm going to go with wildflowers. I, I like the eclectic nature of wildflowers. Well, tonight, thanks to our friend uh, Peter, yep. I'm enjoying four roses. 
That's right. And uh, you know, I'm uh, I I got to tell you, I actually I, I love flowers. I love uh, I love wildflowers. I love roses as well. Yeah, yeah. We've got a a rose bush, a white rose bush, of course, that's growing on the side of our house. Uh, but whenever I go for walks, I try to pick wildflowers and bring them to my daughters, and they, it's always you know very special and that sort of thing. But because of the four roses uh, whiskey that I am enjoying, and of course the white rose, I've got to say roses. Okay. Finally, he's got Spotify or Pandora. Well, you know, this is hard for me because mm. I think Pandora has better radio, and Spotify, of course, has the benefit of listening to exactly what you want when you want to. Um, you know, if I wanted to go listen to the white album, I can literally just go to Spotify and say white album, mm. but the, the radio on Spotify, I don't think is very good. Um, I listen to more of the radio, so I'm going to have to go with Pandora. Yeah. I, same for all the exact same reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, good deal. Well, thank you so Great much. Great question. St. Bubbles. Bubbles. Child well done. of the covenant. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, St. Bubbles is a user over there at thispipelife.com. If you haven't checked out thispipelife.com, you absolutely should. Uh, not the least of which for the reason that you can submit quick fire questions. That's right. Uh, we're, we're, we've uh, knocked out uh, the first two pages of quick fire questions that we've got. we got a third page that we're about to dive into, but we need some more. So uh, head over to thispipelife.com, join the community, and when you do, Use the code CSR uh, to register there. Now, it's absolutely free one way or the other. Don't want to lie to you and say that it's not. But here's the great thing. When you use the code CSR, it's a great way to help support this show. That's and right. it lets them know that you heard about it specifically on this show. So thispipelife.com. Again, use the code CSR when you register at thispipelife.com. Listen to feedback. Ah. Uh. All right, so this is great. This first one comes in from that John. Was our, that was our non-aromatic non smoker saying, ah, I'm so <laughs> excited to hear about listener feedback. All right, this first one it's that we exquisite. get in from uh, John Patrick Wolf is, is really great. Why, yeah. don't you, why don't you take that one? Yeah, sure. He says, uh, so John and Bo, I just had my second child this morning at 9.36 a.m. Contacted us at soon. Oh, my gosh. And he said, we named him Briar. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool, man. Wow. wow. John, man, sh shout out to, look, round of applause, ladies Dude, and gentlemen, yeah, around no, the world right now. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome, Briar. Welcome, welcome Briar. Awesome. Welcome, Briar. Uh, shout man, out that, to John, and, man. And, and, and what a solid name, Briar Wolf. <laughs> Briar Wolf? <laughs> Dude, that kid's going to be a heartbreaker. He's going to be doing well. <laughs> well done, John. Uh, John Patrick, he says, uh, I thought you two uh, would appreciate, uh, would be appreciative to know that he is so comforted by people talking that, that he has a hard time uh, sleeping this evening in quiet and stillness. Uh, so now he is fast asleep, thanks to you two Southern gentlemen, uh, while my awesome wife finally, finally sleeps as well. Um, I, I hope his first words aren't anything that he learned from I mean, us. But, but we were, we were but some of the first accent. voices. That, he's that ever, Briar Wolf has ever heard. That Briar Wolf has said, no, you're right. Think, there's members of his family that haven't even seen him yet. Wow. Why? That, that's right. No, that's you, you're onto something there. All right, so let's forget the fact that I sang Reunited earlier, and maybe we should sing, uh, Hush, little Briar, <laughs> don't cry too loud. Don't be terrified. I, I can't remember all the I, I just know, yeah, I, I hope we haven't scarred the kids for life. There's, <laughs> some, so great, there's some great therapists out there. He's got a bright future. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, so thank you for all uh, the, uh, thank you for all you do for the pipe community. Uh, keep keeping me entertained and for helping my newborn Briar, my little block. Uh, Y'all <laughs> are appreciated uh, from John Patrick. Man, dude, thank you so much and, and congrats on your uh, your beautiful addition to your to your new family. Absolutely, to your, to your growing family. Big shout out to you, John, and and of course to uh, to to your wife and uh, and your newborn. That's that's awesome. That's man. right. That's right. Well, uh, thank y'all so much for, uh, for for whenever we get this this feedback in. It's it's so huge. Although that that one it probably has now got a new special place. That's, all things that's pretty high on the list. You Absolutely. Know? We, we've had a lot of firsts, but I, I don't know that we've uh, we've had first, well, we've, second we've I don't know if we've lulled a newborn to, sm to sleep yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not, so. not with any kind of record proof. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Hey, if you've got some <laughs> feedback for us, you know, one of the great ways to do it is head over to iTunes and write us a review. Uh, if you've never done so before, it's a great way to help out the show. It doesn't cost you a dime to do it. By the way, if you don't mind spending a few dimes to help out the support the show, we uh, encourage you to become a patron or even go the full route and become a club member. Either way you can do so by joining the club at country dot com country squire radio dot com uh click the join the club button right there that's right uh you can also keep up with us throughout the week you can uh follow us at squire radio on twitter 
I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And of course, all that information and more can be found at Country Squire Radio, where you can tune into the live show uh, happening on Mondays at 8:30 p.m. Central Time. That's 6:30 Pacific, 9:30 Eastern. All happening at CountrySquireRadio.com. You did a great job. I do what I can. You're just such a pro. Uh, you know what? Yeah. You've got all this knowledge. I got to I gotta bring something to the table. <laughs> <laughs> and God knows it ain't your voice. So no, you know. <laughs> no. And my voice ain't my face. You got a, you got a face for radio, kid. You're going to do great. It's a good thing I know how to press record. Otherwise, we should be. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't even do that right. I'm oh, just kidding. Snap. Hey, it's been years. It's been years. No, brother. you've done well. It's been yeah, a while. You've done well. Well, guys, <laughs> uh, man, John David, let's go. This day. was fun, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'll see you, brother. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for joining us. I know we ran a little bit late tonight. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, seriously. Thanks for hopping on board with us tonight. We'll uh, we'll see you again next week. Hey, shout out to uh, Mark VV, of course. Thank you. You're uh, you're a good sport. And There's also, some fantastic memes tonight. I'm gonna have to share that one. Uh, the the one that says I'm terrified of Caleb. Uh, he'll, he'll, seen, get a, he'll, seen, he'll get a big kick out of that. You seen this Breaking Bad meme that uh, Portland Paul just put out? Yeah, it's it's really great, man. Yeah. How do we get to Breaking Bad? <laughs> I, you know, every week I feel the same, you know, it's like it, it, we start, you know, with, uh, such good intentions. And at the end, it just turns into, um, a, kind of a dumpster fire. It just is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, guys. Till next good week. night, y'all. See ya.